Hello, you're very welcome. Roisin Curie here, and I'm going to give you a demo on how to paint a bouquet of flowers in a really gorgeous way. Okay, the first thing you have to do is paint your page all over in the dominant colors. The dominant colors in this particular bouquet were a deep yellow, a sort of an apricot, kind of an orangey yellow, slightly darker centers. There was some hot pink flowers right in the middle. I'm using a natural squirrel hair brush and now I have to leave it to dry completely. And while it's drying, I'm going to go and have a careful look at my blossoms because what I really want to do is look for any darks and lights and shapes. So let's have a look and see what we have. Well, there's the lovely apricot coloured rose. Kind of a tight curls of petals. You've got some deep purple ones with little white spots on top. You've got some sunflowers. Look at the shapes of the petals. It's important that I don't just make them up and do a kind of a, a childish sort of petal thing. I have to look carefully and try to capture the way they twist and turn and bend in and out. OK, my paper is bone dry now. It takes a while. Must be patient. The next step is to take your brush, your paintbrush, and to hold it upright. And with the tip of your brush, you're going to paint loose lines for the shapes you see. For the petals, for the blossoms, for any shapes you see. Try and forget that they're flowers and just draw shapes. So nice and bouncy lines, loose. I'm not leaning heavily on my brush at all. I'm just letting the pointed tip do all the work. This is a squirrel brush by Rosemary & Co. It's, I was lucky enough to get one of the limited edition brushes. I think they're all, they're all gone now. But it's a lovely brush to use. Any brush, any round pointed brush will do nicely for this. So there's my yellow rose in on the left. And I'm going to also paint the the centre parts, the dark brown centres of the sunflowers. So I'm just trying to get my shapes down here. And the beauty of this technique is that you don't get that feeling of, oh no, where am I going to put my pen line without making it look too heavy? A brush is the perfect tool for making these leaf shapes as well. So wait for it to dry. And then in comes the fountain pen and you're going to look for edges next to darker edges and I'm saying edges rather than petals because again try to forget what it is you're looking at and you're just looking for edges next to darker edges and I know that any lines I make here are going to be right next to a darker area. I've, tr I've switched over from my, my noodler's straight nibbed pen to my 55 degree foodie pen because I find the point gives you a very expressive line, it gives you a loose and expressive line. And if your pen is nice and clean and the ink is flowing well, you'll find it the best possible pen for this kind of work. And the ink I'm using here is Diatramentus Document Ink in Brown. It's kind of my go to colour for so many, many things. The pink line I used with the straight nib is a blend of Diatramentus fuchsia and I think Diatramentus orange or something like that. I can't really remember. But sometimes I like to blend my inks together. So I'm just scribbling down. Obviously, it's a bit speeded up, but I'm scribbling down some really expressive, nice, loose lines. I'm looking for any dark areas. Oh, this is Diatramentus fuchsia. Um, in this particular pen, because I do like to match my ink colour to whatever it is I'm drawing. So I'm making these little fast circles for the for the flowers and now using the reverse of my nib. So the skinny little position of the line, the reverse of the nib gives you a very thin line. And I'm throwing down these very quick petals for the sunflower. Now I'm doing it fast, but I am looking hard and carefully to make sure the proportions, the shapes, the sizes are all as accurate as I possibly can. People tend to conflate accuracy. Hang on, what's the word? Is it conflate? They get mixed up anyway between accuracy and looseness. You can be perfectly loose and accurate at the same time. And that, in fact, is the goal, because if you're not accurate, 
you're not going to convince anyone. But using a food aid pen in a 55 degree nib and using the reverse of the nib allows you to be super loose and scribbly. Now, it does take practice because you do have to be confident with this. But the only way out, as they say, is through. So you need to get up your ink miles, your ink under the bridge and just draw, 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 draw. And eventually it'll all come through for you. The next step is to use your brush to darken any shadowed areas between petals. Now, I've allowed my ink to dry and I'm looking for dark areas. Now, that doesn't mean I give them a shadow colour. What I tend to do is just give a darker version of the colour that I've made using my brush for the pen for the brush lines for those light dancy lines at the beginning so i'm using a slightly darker apricot inside the petals for the roses tucked in the beautiful tight coil of the petals they have these dark little areas at the base of the petals there's quite a lot of time involved in this bit because you do have to look closely you do have to peer into your blossoms and add a stroke of a darker color wherever you see it darken up a little bit you see the way on the base of the sunflower petals i've done a slightly darker yellow it's kind of hard to tell with the um the the shine and the light but you can just about make it out there and all the time i'm darkening up i'm darkening up and I'm looking for those deeper shades at the base of petals and where they're, where they're lurking inside the tightly coiled blossoms. Then you're going to use your pen to bring definition to leaves and any other gloomy parts. So you're not quite done with your pen yet. See the way I'm using my sketch ink and Roaring Klingner to get into those little patches between leaves and suddenly you've got depth. The dark green Emma sketching by Roaring Klingner is a great colour and I, I find myself using it a lot, particularly from this time of the year onwards, from spring onwards, because I do like to use my foodie pen to get those loose expressive lines. And of course, you can fill in areas very quickly. So the next step is I find that an acrylic pen is fantastic for lighter flowers that need to stand out. So I'm using pink and purple acrylic pens on top of the colours that I've already painted because there's no way you're going to get that bright pink colour to show up on top of watercolour, especially if it's like yellow underneath or something like that. It's all very well painting green leaves on top of yellow because you can you can get that combination easily enough, but you won't get a clear, clean pink on top of yellow or orange. And that's where your gel pens come in because they will happily sit on top of anything at all. Now this purple pen is really good quality. It's by Posca, but it does, produce quite a lot of acrylic so it's going to take ages to dry it's important to be patient you need to go over any bits that need deepening in pen or paint so the next steps are basically me looking out for dark dark areas and sometimes I do it in the Emma dark green color by Roaring Klingner and sometimes I go even darker and I jump in with my Lotta by Roaring Klingner. And that's super dark. That's what I'm doing here. I'm looking for really, really deep, dark patches. But I'm sparing with this. I only use it when I think I really need to go super dark. Because it's fantastic for making things jump out and look 3D. You can see I'm using it to do the very darkest bits of the centres of the sunflowers. Just where they meet the petals. It's tempting to sort of go, oh, yeah, yeah, just throw in all these dark shadow bits. But do be sparing and be judicious with your use of any really dark colours. I can see some some darker bits that need that need darkening. And I'm blending them out there a little bit.
So this is the bit that makes all the difference. The shady tones and the values, they're the bits that are going to make your painting really stand out because it did start off very flat with the overall colour in the background. And when it's completely dry, I'm going to use an opaque white media. I like to use gouache on the highlighted parts just to show where the light is hitting the petals. Now, I will be honest with you, I sort of thought to myself when I put it down that the flowers ended up looking like those, you know, those, you know, those fake flowers. I don't know if you can still get them because they're dreadful. The ones that have like plastic droplets of water glued onto them. Well, I kind of thought that my white gouache looked a bit like that when I put it on. But I gave it a try anyway and I thought, well, I can always blend it in a little bit. And I did think it was important to get those bright white areas around the, the edges of the petals where the, the light was hitting it. I haven't given up with my pen yet. I'm just noticing a couple of leaves that I hadn't done yet. Now, I used my Sakura white gel pen for some of the areas of white, the white little dots. But to be honest, it wasn't really flowing very well. So I went back in with my opaque, my gouache on, on a brush. And it's an etcher brush I use for my, my gouache because I don't want to mix my lovely watercolour brushes into gouache. I'm, I'm sure they'd be fine, but I'm not going to do that because my watercolour brushes are delicate and they're precious and they're expensive. So I'm looking at that and I'm appraising it. I'm wondering, hmm, what am I going to do with those bits of white? And in the end, I softened some of them out with a damp brush just with water on it to stop them looking like they had plastic droplets of water glued on top of the petals, which I'm sure some people think are just fabulous. Some of the purple little flowers had bright white spots on them. So I didn't have any compunction about throwing them on top in an undiluted white gouache. Oh, and about your white gouache, you want it wet enough so that it just about flows over your page, but no wetter because you otherwise you lose the opacity of it. And I am using it specifically as a, a white opaque medium on top of everything. Painting in some more green leaves in between the blossoms. And trying to find any spots that still need deepening up. As I say, these bits at the end make all the difference. And they're a lot of fun as well. Okay, I'm not sure about that particular strip of white. There you go. Look at that. Just softened it off. So the error of my ways. So just be a bit careful. Okay, there we go. Be a bit careful with your white gouache. You don't want it to be too clumsy. Some darker patches. Oh, and that's the corner of the table, actually, in the top right, right corner. I added some burnt sienna. So the colours I used are by Roman Schmal, and they're a combination of azo yellow. They are Aquarius yellow. They're Aquarius orange. I use magenta for the pink flowers. I use sap green mixed with a little yellow for the leaves in between. And then I use burnt sienna for the bits of table around the edge. And the rest was basically the ink colours that you're looking at. Maybe there's a little bit of burnt umber mixed with some yellow. Oh, I know, I know what it is. It's natural umber reddish. It's one of the new colours by Roman Schmal, and I really like it. And it's just mixed with yellow to give that extra deep colour going towards the base of the flowers. And when it's dry, just scribbling in around the petals to make them jump out. And there we go. Still wet, still dripping. And my beautiful bouquet given to me as a birthday flower bouquet by one of my wonderful students. I have to wait for it to dry before I start holding it up again because it's the colours will just run right off the page. And I'm happy with this because I'm so used to making all my flower arrangements, my flower paintings stiff and kind of losing their fresh look. But with this technique, you can really capture the looseness and the freshness. And you know what? It's actually not that hard. So 
get yourself a bouquet of flowers or get someone to give them to you, even better. Have a go and the best of luck. See you next time. If you buy a Rosemary brush, be sure to use the code Roisin2024 and I'll get a few points for that. Thank you.